ജോൺ പ്രൊഫസർ സതീഷ് കുമാർ ബിനു മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റാഫ് ആൻഡ് മൈ ഡിയർ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ ഐ വാണ്ട് ടു കൺഗ്രാച്ചുലേറ്റ് യു ഐ ഹാവ് സീൻ ദ വണ്ടർഫുൾ എക്സിബിറ്റ്സ് യു ഹാവ് പ്രസൻറ്റഡ് ഓൺ ദ ബോക്സ് ദ സയൻസ് ഓർ ഓൺ ദ ത്രീ സയൻസ് ദ നെയിംസ് ഓഫ് ഗ്രേറ്റ് സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് and their activities and this is actually the scientific temple the self imposed projects you have done so first of all i want to congratulate the leadership father jos sadish kumar binu and the other other staff and you for making this wonderful uh, program and the exhibits Sri C.P. John was speaking in detail about what is scientific temper. He has given us an awareness, not only in science, but also in history, in economics and many other levels, we should have this scientific temper. So I want to continue along with this line of thought. how we should have this scientific temper scientific temper i must say that you know it is due to hard work creativity and self imposed projects what you have done here these are all not because of your teachers might have told you to do something but it is each one of or a group of students coming together and exhibiting working hard and presenting and this is the the future life and when i want to speak to you about the contributions of cb ram then also we have a few other great scientists from india who had contributed very much to the quantum mechanics they were all doing self imposed the projects so as uh, binu want me that you know you are all from technology so i just thought of what is meant by science science is power so science is knowledge and technology is power science has a kind of a methodology a process that is experiment uh, we have the observation the experiment hypothesis verification or false mechanism law statement and a theory so we have different uh, theories in physics chemistry biology and many other so i will be confining to that of the, the quantum mechanics so i will just give you a very brief uh, detail about what is quantum mechanics so quantum mechanics was initiated by what is the name of this Max Planck Max Planck started his research in 1886 and it was a very simple research he was doing how heat is being absorbed and heat how heat is being emitted so that is a very simple question so this simple question took almost 14 years so he came up with the solution that you know heat is absorbed and it is emitted in equal quantity and it is absorbed in terms of integral multiples of h which we call as planck's constant it is a the minute divisible element of energy so that is the quantum of action h that is 6.62 to 10 to the power of minus 34 joules per second so that is the the quantity so that is what max planck discovered and he presented this in december 14 1900 in the physical society of berlin we can say that you know that is the beginning of quantum mechanics so he initiated quantum mechanics and then uh, the second uh, proposal for extension was given by albert 
Einstein, that is, he tried to explain, he received a very prize for this photoelectric effect. This has lots of technological uh, expansion and the discoveries there are lots of made, and that is what the, the present day solar energy, renewable energy is made up of uh, this photoelectric uh, effect. So that is, Einstein was seeing that light is not waves, but it is particles. And then he says that when light rays are falling on selenium, germanium cells, the outer shells are absorbing this quantum of energy and they are liberated and flowing as electrons. And that is giving rise to current, electrical current. So that is the photoelectric effect and for this he received the, the Nobel Prize. So this is the second expansion and the third one is the structure of atom and the quantum of action was united by Niels Bohr in explaining the hydrogen spectrum. So here we have a number of lines, partial, fund, Balmer and many other lights and how these lights they could not explain then he said that you know the ground state that is the electron in the ground state is absorbing quantum of action in, the, in terms of integral multiple of H jumps into the higher orbits into the excited states and they will be coming back into the ground state while leaving the extra energy into light. So that is the, the third. So these are the three, that is the quantization of radiation, quantization of energy, and quantization of space. And this is known as the quantum leap. So these are the three important uh, developments. And then we see that later the mathematics, that is the Hilbert space. In Hilbert space, we have, we have the de Broglie relations, that is, the, that is uh, one of the great discoveries made by de Broglie, that is Einstein said that the waves can become particles, then de Broglie thought that why not particles could become waves and then this is the de Broglie relations. And basing on this de Broglie relations, we see that Schrodinger is making wave mechanics. So that is a mathematical structure, the wave mechanics. H psi is equal to E psi. What is this psi function? Psi function is the state of a system. And by manipulating it, we will get the result. So this is more imaginative. People can imagine experience. So in this imaginative way of experiencing the, the reality. So he has developed it and he has joined it with the classical uh, physics. Then this is Heisenberg. He had made the matrix mechanics. We have the columns and the rows. This waves and the uh, So he, this is more of an abstract the state of a system can be expressed in the Hilbert space. That is more of an abstract mathematical space. So the reality is represented in the mathematical space. That is the Hilbert space. And by manipulating it, we get the result. And this result is later interpreted in terms of philosophical positions to the reality. So we have three important philosophical positions. Bohr uh, proposed that, you know, the particle and the wave, the complementarity principle, that is the wave and the particle together give a comprehensive account of the reality. So he later extended it in terms of the male and the female, subject and the object, intuition and rationality in many other ways. Then this is the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. That is, you know, when we have two conjugate variables, we cannot measure precisely. There will be a certain amount of error. Delta x into delta y is less than or equal to x bar. 
So this is H stands for Planck's constant. Then the other uh, conjugate variable is delta T into delta E, that is the time and energy. So what is uh, this principle is saying that there will be a measure of unknowability. And the, the third one is that Max Bond's probability. That is, we may not be able to explain or detect an electron with certainty. We can only speak in terms of probability. Just by tossing the coin out of 10, we may have 6 or 7 and they, uh, that is the, the head, the other three. So we may not be able to. So all together we have a kind of indeterminism. The reality cannot be not certainly. We have certain amount of unknowability, uncontrollability. These are what the quantum mechanics. So this is one of the debates between Einstein and the Copenhagen interpretation. That is the nature, whether it is deterministic or indeterministic. And uh, we do not know. The Einstein and his group would say that you know it is the nature of the theory that makes it, uh, it is indeterministic. That is, quantum mechanics is incomplete. That is what uh, they used to, to tell. But Bohr and his associates will say that you know no, it is the nature is. Which one do you prefer? Deterministic world or indeterministic world? If I make a what? You have any preference? You want a chaotic world or a perfectly determined world? Which one? Anyone want to raise your hands to say that determined world or indeterminate world? It depends. So this is uh, in a very natural what is meant by quantum mechanics. To this, this quantum mechanics, Indians have contributed. One is specifically C.V. Raman. And there are also some of the uh, exhibits naming another uh, scientist who had contributed very much to the foundations of quantum mechanics. Can you name? with integral spin, with one spin as integral uh, 
spin is known as bosons and with half integral or 1 by 2 is known as or three, uh, 2 by 3 is known as fermions. So these are the two particles fermions and bosons. So bosons and then we have the just recent discoveries the Higgs bosons 1964 Higgs proposed that you know how matter is having mass this Higgs field is something like a water and if particles are interacting suppose that you know you are swimming in water and uh, you do not know the swimming very well and you are drinking Raman's assistant K.S. Krishnan told him that you know that year Lord Compton received a Nobel Prize because of X-ray crystallography all of a sudden Raman understood what is the result of it he understood that you know scattering can happen also in light rays then he applied that into the field of light he was with the question he 1921 he went to Europe as he was crossing the Mediterranean he found that you know in certain places that is on the sea some places it is green and some other places it is blue so just like anyone else thousands and thousands of people have crossed the sea nobody asked this question that is his power of imagination and observation he asked the question why there is green and blue the discrimination and he with 20,000 rupees he came uh, he uh, he had done the experiment in 1928 uh, and that resulted the Raman effect what is the Raman effect Raman effect is simply this one suppose that the water is shallow light rays blue light rays is falling into the water then the water will be absorbing energy from the light rays the refracted light ray will have less energy they will be green that is shallow waters light rays with blue blue light rays falling into the shallow waters the water will be absorbing energy from the light rays and the light rays will be losing energy coming out with the less that is the green and then suppose that you know green light rays are falling into a very deep uh, water level it goes down and the light rays are absorbing energy from the water coming out with more energy that is into the blue the refracted into the blue that is why they are coming up they are seeing it as blue it is not because of the reflection and it is a quantum mechanical effect that is the quantum of action so the light rays is absorbing in terms of quantum the integral multiples of quantum so he had contributed to the discovery or the extension further extension of quantum mechanics and 1928 it is said that today that is February 28 he discovered that and that is why we remember today as this science day and this nobody has told him to discover or to study this but as a self-imposed project so just like Raman just like Bose I think it is your duty to work hard discover something and it will be maybe uh, some of your names like the Binu effect I know his name but maybe uh, some of your names who knows that you know yeah Sadish effect or you know so that way we will have later the discoveries or the, or the instruments definitely I am looking forward that you know many of your names will be immortalized that way so he received the Nobel Prize in 1930 and I had the opportunity to uh, 
mathematical uh, formulations of the uh, Raman effect and by his own handwriting it is kept in the Niels Bohr's archive. Not only that, Raman had sent many of the students from India writing to Niels Bohr saying that, you know, please give them apprenticeship, please uh, give them scientific temper, let them uh, do research there so that after that research experience, let them come back to India and develop science in India. So there are at least 10, 15 students who have been sent by Raman. They were there for many years, practiced and then came back. And one of them was written a beautiful uh, work on quantum mechanics, one Matthew. He's a professor uh, in Kerala. So he has uh, written. So I must say that, you know, this is how Raman was trying to develop uh, the science. And then Raman's nephew, that was also, when he was 19, he was, he developed the Chandrasekhar limit. And Arthur Eddington at that time was a great scientist. He was an authority. So nobody uh, questioned him. And then he said that, Eddington said that, black holes, that is, awkward. Weird, and then it doesn't exist. So therefore, in 1980 only we could discover because nobody researched for searched for black holes. But in the 70s they have discovered black holes, confirmed it. 1983, Subramanya Chandrasekhar received the Nobel Prize. I must say that you know some of your uh, teachers would say that when you are coming up with the new projects, that sometimes they can say that. You should not leave that. You should, if you have a passion, pursue it. Exactly in the, the same way their teachers told to Victor De Broglie. When De Broglie came up with the solution that, you know, if the waves can become particles, why not the particles can become waves? Willie Bean, who was going through uh, the doctorate, the dissertation said that I can't allow him uh, to become a doctor in physics because this is a weird idea. Nobody can believe it. But because of his director, Paul Langevin, he was scrapped through but sent to Einstein and found that it's a great discovery, groundbreaking. So it's the same way sometimes you know, the teachers can tell you that, you know, this is meaningless, this doesn't work. Should not throw away your passion. You continue. Today, whatever you dream, I am sure that you know it is possible that you can realize it. So pursue your dreams. There is also uh, another great scientist, Sienna Rao. Sienna Rao has just recently written a forward to my book, new book, new book on the physics and philosophy of the cosmos. So there he writes about how Raman was a great inspiration. And he also says that, well, I want to give, contribute to inspire the great minds. Therefore, every year, I think around more than 500 or 1,000 students he assembles in Trivandrum and he comes and gives lectures. He is someone, I had the great opportunity to visit uh, his deep university in Bangalore, Jawaharlal Nehru uh, Deep University. I must say that, you know, one of the instruments covers 46 crores. What does it do? It is simply slicing any of the metal into the atomic level. And you can see the lattices, you can see the atoms. And I have seen it. So that is how he was trying to develop science. Loads of researchers are there. So you must dream. And that is what another Paradharatna is speaking to us. Dream, dream, dream. That doesn't mean that you don't have to sleep 
now. I have seen some of the friends are maybe they are dreaming about the future, but dreaming about the nice activities, the discoveries you want to make. Because you know, unless you dream, you will not be possible. So Raman was someone who was dreaming about. He was the first one, the first non-white to receive a prize in science, Nobel Prize. And then Sierra Rao received almost all prizes except the Nobel Prize. And just recently he has written, uh, he received uh, the, uh, the Bharat Ratna. So therefore, all these people, the great uh, people are showing us what is to be discovered. No one will tell you, it is your hard work, creativity, having your own passion and dream. And I must say that when uh, today listen to uh, Professor Dr. Jose Kannambura, I understood that how he is capable of inspiring you. And this great institution, I must say that, you know, it is the dream project of Mark Arkel. And I had the opportunity to interact with him from very simple. I must say that the whole institute, you know, this engineering college, and I heard from Father Jose that, you know, this is one of the largest. And I have seen some of your students in EIT, Bellur Institute of Technology, they are doing their attack. And uh, they were very happy about it. And uh, I came to know more about this institute and I am coming here for the first time. The great, as Sri Sipi John was telling, you know, 10 story buildings. And it is only because of the great visionaries can create it. So, Mark Arakil, I must say that. He has developed that PDS and he was selling gooseberry uh, jams and that is the beginning of it. Gooseberry means Nelika, Nelika Arishtam. And they were going to jump on the Narada Vikiva. So that is the beginning. See how that PDS. And this was a very remote place. And C.P. John was saying that, you know, he was instrumental in signing or, you know, developing that. And this. And this is all because of the hard work, self-imposed projects. And you are the great lucky people. And you should also have the dreams. The dreams, I was, I must say that, you know, I am not great or anything, but I had the opportunity to interact with the Nobel Prize winners. I am not far away from this place, from Tikoi. And uh, being with uh, Niels Borsan Obor, Friedrich Weizsäcker, who received the Nobel Prize, and many uh, uh, others. So, you can, sky is the limit. So, dream high. Look for the, nine, the 20th century was the flowering of the German culture. They have discovered theory of relativity, quantum mechanics. And I must say that, you know, 21st century is the flowering of the Indian culture. As Sri C.P. John was telling that we had the great mathematicians, Nilakanta and many others from the 15th to 14th centuries. So definitely, I am looking forward, as he said that, you know, great names, Nobel Prize winners, great discoveries from this great institute. So I wish you all the best, good luck, and look for your own dreams and passions. Thank you. So this is a book that is on Galileo. It, it speaks about Copernicus, Galileo and everything. Also, uh, John, uh, see, uh, John was speaking about you know, the debate between science and religion. So I uh, give to the principal and it will be in the library you can look for. And if anyone wants, I can send you the PDF which you can read.